What's up, everybody? It's Chris Gethin here, the CEO of Cage Muscle, and this is another episode of the Knowledge and Mileage podcast. Do I sound sexier this week? I'm talking through a new microphone here in a new studio, and I feel a little bit out of place. It's very, very nice. It's very plush. And then you have me in here sticking out like a short, stocky Welshman. Anyway, today's episode is again going to be going through the eight-week muscle building video trainer, giving you extra hints, tips, and all that sort of stuff. And if you've liked the previous episodes so far, please do me a favor. Subscribe, share, let your friends know, and please leave me an honest, unbiased review. Am I doing any good? Or am I doing terrible? Should I try golf? Anyway, let's get straight into this week's episode. What I'm going to highlight today, because I've seen a lot of it as of recent, for those going through this video series, is complaining. Stop complaining is what this week's episode is called. And I'm going to use my mother as an example here, because she is away skiing at the moment in the highest mountains of France. And this time last year, she wiped out when we were on a family skiing holiday, and she tore her meniscus, she tore her ACL, and she also fractured her patella. So three major injuries there when she wiped out. Her knee almost, you know, swelled up pretty much straight away and uh, went back to the cabin. And, uh, you know, I, I was there like, we got to call a doctor. And mum was like, no, 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 I just need aspirin. Just stop fussing around me. I'm okay. You know, that's mum for you. Uh, so I didn't listen to that. Obviously, I called a doctor. They took her away. Uh, while we were in France, and they said, look, you've got some major damage going on there. You need to get that checked out as soon as possible. She didn't. You know, we stayed there for the rest of the holiday. She, They gave her some crutches, so she uh, had some spikes on the ends of her crutches, <laughs> so not to slip, and uh, she enjoyed the rest of the holiday. Went back uh, to the UK. I came back to the US, and I was on the phone every day. Have you been to the doctors yet? Have you had an MRI? Have you had an X-ray? No, she was putting it off because she had another holiday to go to, a family holiday in, uh, let me think, where was that? I can't remember. It was overseas, another skiing holiday somewhere. And she went on that one. She didn't ski, but she enjoyed her time hobbling around on her uh, crutches with spikes. And then she had the MRI and um, x-ray when she came back. And lo and behold, fractured patella, torn meniscus, torn ACL. Uh, so she went and had surgery and got all that fixed. And it was funny because uh, that the day after, I believe it was, she was allowed to go back home. And my sister went to visit her and she wasn't home. And my sister called her and was like, where are you? And she said, oh, I'm down at the farmer's market. You know, back to normality straight away. And the one thing that I really admire about my mother in that regards is that she doesn't look for attention. She doesn't ever complain. She doesn't ever pity me, woe me. I'm so much worse off than everybody else. She ignores it. You know, denial can be a bad thing because maybe she would have done herself more harm than good. But here she is, less than, you know, a year later, and she's up on the highest mountains in France skiing as we speak which I think is a true testament of somebody who's, uh, you know, I'm not saying that she's old by any means, but, you know, she's uh, older than the average person who usually complains of things much, much smaller. I hate complainers. People who moan, whinge about the smallest of things. Hate is probably a little bit harsh, but I dislike it. So, that's what I'm going to be talking about because when I received these little videos from dad this morning showing mum skiing down the hill, I thought, isn't that awesome? I haven't heard her complain, moan, whinge once about it. And hadn't, uh, hadn't it been for me to order her a knee support last week from Amazon, uh, she, you know, she would have gone there without that even, you know, because, you know, why would something as small as that bother her? Okay, we can all take something from that. So one of the things I'd like to say to you is don't complain to yourself. Don't confirm these 
con- uh, negative connotations of I'm tired, I'm so tired, I'm lethargic, I want to hit the snooze button, I, I don't feel like getting up and this morning, I'm, I'm just so exhausted, you know, it's like pity me, God, do you have to walk eight miles for your food? Do you have to walk 12 miles for your water? No, you only have to walk downstairs to a tap, a water filter, a water bottle. You ain't got it so hard. And, um, you know, I hear the other complaints. I don't need to do this. Well, no, you don't need to do this, but you committed yourself to this program in the beginning. You committed that you wanted to improve your health, get in shape, lose body fat, increase muscle, your endurance performance, be an inspiration to your kids. You made that commitment, so why can't you follow through? Again, I will hear over and over again, I'm missing out, but I can't go and eat whatever I want at this wedding. I can't go to the buffet. I can't go to this celebration. I'm missing out on a Super Bowl party because of the food. Food doesn't control you. You control you. Just because there's edibles, just because there's you know, snacks, dips, chips around, does it mean that you have to have it? Is it because social pressure has pushed you to be part of the norm by giving in to that? No. You are an individual. You have your own DNA, your own genetic makeup, your own characteristics, your own personality. So be true to that. Don't fall in line. You know, you're not a sheep. You're a leader. You don't have to be a follower. So create something that you can be proud of because sleeping in, eating those dips and chips isn't something that you're necessarily going to be proud of. And just because other people drink alcohol when they go out, does it mean that you have to? No. There's no reason why you can't go through this without moaning and complaining to yourself and reaffirming those negative connotations that aren't going to get you anywhere. And stop complaining to others. Do you think anybody, your wife, your husband, your kids, your co-workers, people at the gym want to hear you complaining, moaning on social networks? Come on, guys. Man up. Grow up. So complaining to others like, you know, you have no idea what I'm going through is a terrible way to start a conversation or even to end a conversation. Because everybody has their own issues, big, small, and a lot of it is generated within their own heads. It doesn't have to be what is part of a general social norm as being big or small. Everybody has their own issues. You have people who are multi-billionaires who are much more depressed and suicidal than those that are homeless that would invite you to their shack for, for a last meal with them. Everybody has different issues, so never say you have no idea and pity me and my situation and my situation is much worse than anyone else. Oh, it's easier for you. I love that one. When people say to me, well, you're Chris Gethin. You get to work out for a living. I've never, ever been able to work out for a living. And believe me, when I was bodybuilding and training and much more strict and disciplined than I am right now, I had jobs as a builder's laborer, a driver, uh, an oriel structure worker. A, um, I was in, working in a wood, wood warehouse furniture factory, loading furniture all day. Um, I was also a sprayer, a lacquer sprayer, a barman. Uh, what else was I? I was a bit of everything. I was a panel beater for a while. I had so many jobs. I worked in an aluminium factory uh, for about eight months, working six in the evening till six in the morning one week and six in the morning till six in the evening the following week. And amongst all of this, at some point, I went to college for three years. So why people think now I can do that, I must have it easier now, is beyond me because, believe me, I work much longer hours than I did back then doing any of those laborious jobs. Laborious jobs for me are much easier. Spending so much time on the phone on conference calls and editing content and then filming content is a little bit harder for me, especially with all the traveling that I do and trying to stay on top of these things. I simply work out and just have it captured as additional content to inspire you. I don't do that for a living. That isn't my main source of income by any means of the imagination. 
I do this because it's a part of my life. Training is therapy and it's a necessity. Just like you need to have a cup of coffee or brush your teeth in the, in the morning, I need to work out. I'm an asshole to be around otherwise. My girlfriend can attest to that. Got to train, got to train. I'm not being selfish, honey. I'm doing it for you. So stop telling others about how bad you got it. And please don't tell me or anyone else. Well, it's easier for you. You don't have kids. You don't have commitments. You get to work out for a living. I'm younger. You're older. All that bullshit. I'm, it's all I think is yawn. Anyway, stop thinking up excuses as well. I hear so many excuses at this stage of the video series. You're in week, if you started at the very beginning upon launch, you're in week five now, I believe. And this is where I'm starting to see a few more excuses seep up. So, okay, I may be telling you not to come up with excuses. Well, it's easy to say that. So I just want you to be aware and acknowledge those excuses that you may be coming up with. Okay, so I'll hear it like, I'll make up my cheat meals with extra cardio. You can't cheat and then do triple cardio. Doesn't work like that. If there was a way to get ahead, I would have given you those keys already. You know, I know it's a little bit different when you're flying and a pilot says, well, it's okay, we're late, we'll make up time. Can't do that in a transformation. And uh, another excuse I hear is, well, I'll just miss this one cardio. Or I'll take it a little bit easier. I'm not going to hit the Stairmaster today. I'll just go outside for a stroll instead. Always looking for the easier routes. Just like anything in life, if you're looking at building a business, uh, don't think that, okay, I'm going to take the shortest, fastest route and hopefully I'll still get to the top. Doesn't work like that. You shouldn't be thinking, I'm going to try to get to A to B with doing as little as humanly possible just to get me there doesn't work like that. You should go over and above and be precise. And uh, another uh, one of those excuses is cardio back to back because nobody wants to split up their cardios from the morning and in the evening because why? It's inconvenient. Yeah, there's a lot of things that are inconvenient. Building a business is inconvenient. Getting the physique that you desire is inconvenient. Otherwise, everybody would be a, uh, a business owner. Everybody would have the body that they want. There's a lot of convenience out there, but the successful people do the shit that they don't want to do every damn day with consistency. Okay? So don't think just because you got 40 minutes to do in the morning and 40 minutes in the evening, you go, well, you know what? I'm just going to do double cardio and do, you know, I'm going to double up and do 120 minutes. doesn't work like that. You need to double spike that metabolism, efficiently burn the calories throughout the day, and then you will do another cardio in the evening to efficiently burn calories during the evening. Okay, it's all about efficiency. It isn't about burning fat there and then for that particular amount of time that you're performing cardio. It's to spike your metabolism and efficiently go through the nutrition that you are taking into your body as an energy source to speed up the metabolism instead of a storage bucket. I like to eat popcorn when I go to the cinema. There you go. I've just come out with it. These are my sins. Popcorn. However, it's always healthy popcorn, if there's such a thing. I'll get that low-calorie, 35-calorie popcorn sometimes when I go to the cinema. But you know what? When I start a diet, I get out of that routine. One of the things that I hate the most is people who say, but I've always done that. I've always done this. This is a habit. You know, I've always been a part of this. I've always had popcorn when I go to the cinema. Yeah, I've always had popcorn when I go to the cinema. But you know what? You don't live by your past of habits that have got you into a bad way or bad shape or something that's going to be a little bit more recreational instead of being goal oriented you have to change those habits you swip you click the you know you hit the switch so up until recently late last year I hadn't missed a meal for like 19 years as weird as that may sound I just, you know, I knew I didn't really have the genetics. I didn't have the fuller muscle bellies. I didn't have the little waist, the little joints. Just didn't have the look to be a real good bodybuilder. 
but I knew that I had to really outwork others, not just more hours, but I mean with efficiency, intensity, and discipline more than anyone else if I wanted to attain my goals. I just had to push it that much more. And one of those goals was never miss a meal, never miss a workout, never miss a cardio. So unless it was planned to miss a workout, et cetera, I would never miss that meal, supplement, workout, cardio, ever. However, up until um, several months ago, I went and had a colonoscopy and I had to fast for 24 hours. So I thought, you know what? Well, considering I'm fasting anyway, I might as well just give this intermittent fasting a go because I've never really been able to give a true opinion on it without trying it. I always say knowledge without mileage is bullshit. So I wanted to put my um, mileage in and see what sort of knowledge that I'd gain from it. So immediately I switched the, f- the, the switch. I just knocked it on the head. I didn't think, oh, but throughout the past, you've always ate seven or eight meals every single day. You can't do this just like that. But I did. And you can too. So then uh, I fasted from, say, what was it, eight or nine o'clock in the evening until about five or six o'clock the following day. And I did that five days a week. All you have to do is make that commitment. You have the power. You can talk yourself down. You can talk yourself out of it. And guess what? You'll be back where you started. Or do the absolute opposite and talk yourself into it and apply it and stop bitching, moaning, oh, woe me, because there's so many other people out there much more worse off than you. So I'm going to tell you right now, you need to harden your fucking resolve. Harden up. There's too many people that are getting softer by the day, by the week, by the year, and I'm starting to get sick of it. I don't want to be surrounded by it. You wonder why I'm a bit of a loner? Because I don't want to be influenced by it. So you need to change your perspective. Think about those poor people that live in third world countries who have got it hard, who don't have a cushion, they don't have a duvet, they don't know where their next meal is coming from. They have to perform activity like 10, 12, 13, 14, 15 mile walks every day just to get water. They have it hard. You do not. So stop moaning, bitching, complaining. I can't do this. It's too hard. Bullshit. You've just become a part of your environment and the environment is getting softer. And I'm here to try to get you to harden up. A lot of these challenges that I do, whether it be like for, you know, these transformations or whether it be that ultra marathon that I just did or the Ironman events last year, I don't do that really for anything else other than to harden my resolve because I know the transcendence effect of doing things that I don't want to do is going to seep into other aspects, much like the fasting. I wanted to give an opinion. I wanted to see what it's like, but I just wanted to see if I had the audacity and the commitment to follow through because I know that's going to give me the audacity and follow through to wake up every morning on time to make sure that I get my workout done when I commit to it. If I make a vision board that I'm going to make that reality and create that into something that is tangible. A lot of people don't. So do something out of your normal, comfortable environment to harden you the fuck up. So embrace the challenge. This challenge is something that you decided to do, not anybody else. You weren't influenced. You weren't pushed to it. No one put a gun to your head. You decided to do it. So commit. It is only eight weeks of your life. That is a very small sacrifice. That is the boot camp for the rest of your life. Believe me, you're going to be thinking, God, I just want to cheat. I want to eat peanut butter. I want to have a fucking burger. But when you start to eat the littlest sweet things like fruit, that will seem amazing. Having a healthy homemade burrito will taste unfucking real So you can then edge your way into a healthy lifestyle that isn't so strict as this because a comparative measure will be quite easy to follow through. So stop thinking about chocolates, dips, and all that crap. So I'd suggest a couple of things here. Read some Henry Rowland's books. I love the Black Coffee Blues. He puts everything into perspective. Even at his age right now in the late 50s, when he goes out on tour, he doesn't take a day off. He may be out on the road for six months straight because he's toughened up. He's hardened his resolve and he doesn't give in to society's soft emotional implications because, come on, you can't put a word wrong these days without having some sort of report back that uh, you've been a naughty boy. So, 
that's what I like. I like to lead, read some of Rowling's books. That helps me put me back into perspective. I also like Andy Frisella's motherfucking CEO project. Shout out to Andy. All of his uh, content that he puts out on his podcast, I think, is absolutely phenomenal. Again, he gets you to kind of look at the blunt perspective in the eye and harden the fuck up. And I really like Andy for his perspective like that. You know, he grew up in a farm, much like I did. Grew up on a hard work ethic, and uh, nothing was easy for him. Nothing was easy for me. And I, I, I'm so lucky I had it that way. So many people had it easy when they were growing up, and their parents thought they were doing a good thing. And now look at those kids. It's a bad way of bringing people up. Hey, I'm no parent. I'm just giving you my opinion. And, uh, you know, I like Gary Vee, Gary Vee's content. But there's a woman out there called The Iron Nun. The Iron Nun. She's got a book out, and I believe it's called The Iron Nun. Sister Madonna is her name. She is a sister, not my sister, a sister of the church. And uh, up until the age of 84, she was keep competing in Ironman triathlons. She was breaking records. Because uh, I think she started at about 50 years old. She started. And then she was breaking records at, in her late 50s. And then again in the 60s. And then again in the 70s. What was amazing, though, about her story is the amount of accidents and injuries and problems this woman came up against. But she persisted. She, bro she broke her wrist like a week before a race. But she still committed and went through that race. Not complaining, not moaning. She completed it. And I find somebody like her a massive inspiration, a huge inspiration. She's here in Spokane, not far from us in Idaho. And check out her book, The Iron Nun, Sister Madonna. So people like that, when you look up to and you, and you see what they go through, it's like it puts you in perspective and see how small our little issues are. So anyway, that is today's episode. Stop complaining. I'm Chris Gethin. Remember, if you do like this podcast, please subscribe. Please leave an honest, unbiased review and share with your friends. Until next week, this is the Knowledge and Mileage Podcast. Peace.